Hello my friends and welcome to episode 4 of my Numenorean Rulers series, where today we will be covering the reign of the 5th ruler, Ta Meneldur. Now, from this point in the series, we have started to potentially cover the time period we might see in the upcoming Amazon Lord of the Rings show, or the start of it. Lots of things start to heat up during this time as well, which you'll we'll find out about soon. But to quickly recap on last episode, which was quite a while ago, we saw the full reign of Tar Elendil, the fourth ruler of Numenor. During his reign, the Numenoreans made first contact with Middle-earth. Also near the end of his reign, rumours and whispers started to build from the east about a potential threat. Now let's begin. Tar Meneldu, the fifth ruler, whose birth name was Irimon, was the son of the fourth ruler of Numenor, Tar Elendil, who we looked at in the last episode. Tar Meneldu was the eldest son of Tar Elendil, but the youngest child as he had older sisters. But due to the old royal law of succession in Numenor, he was given the sept of Numenor and the crown instead of his older sisters. He had a great loving and passion for stargazing and to learn everything about the heavens from the studies and law of men and elves. To support his study for stargazing, he built a great tower in the forest star, which was located at the northernmost part of Numenor. Tar Meneldo only left the tower when he inherited his scepter, as his love for the heavens and stars was that great. Tar Meneldo had less affection for the sea and had no real interest, but still married the daughter of Vianto, the captain of the king's ships during the reign of Tar Elendil, the fourth ruler of Numenor and Tar Meneldo's father. And her name was Almarien, and then married her later. They had three children, a son, Anadil, and two daughters, Aliniel and Almiel. All of his children were born before he became king in 740 of the Second Age. Tar Menelda's son Anadil grew older and became known as Aldarion, which many of you will know him as. And like his grandfather Vianta, Aldarion loved the sea, and even in 725 of the Second Age, Tar Menelda reluctantly agreed and allowed Aldarion to sell with Vianta to Middle-earth. Aldarion then returned in the year 727 of the Second Age, which pleased Tar Meneldo greatly. But then Aldarion begged again to sail, and then two more voyages commenced in the year 730 of the Second Age and 735 of the Second Age. When Tar Elendil relinquished the scepter to his son Tar Meneldo, Aldarion remained at home for a while. Tar Meneldo and his son Aldarion clashed for a while as Aldarion formed a guild of venturers and left Armenelos, the capital of Numenor, to reside on his ship Iamba. Tar Meneldo disliked and was displeased with the voyages of his son and saw a potential urge for dominion over lands by his son as well. Their relationship weakened and even Elmarian, Tar Meneldo's wife and Aldarion's mother, supported him, which left Tar Meneldo no choice but to let matters proceed. He still tried to intervene and prohibited the cutting of trees for shipbuilding, but this only resulted in Eldarion seeking timber in Middle-earth. Finally, in the year 800 of the Second Age, Tar Meneldo commanded his son to stop voyaging as he was around 100 years old, around the age to be proclaimed the king's heir and for a time the two are reconciled because of this. But six years later, Aldarion again longed for the sea and with the reluctancy of Tar Meneldo, he sailed again. At the same time, Tar Meneldo along with Almarian wanted their son to marry and a woman called Arendis from the queen's household especially caught his attention. The two did eventually fall in love, but this did not prevent Aldarion to voyage yet again. When he returned, Tar Meneldo forbade his son from leaving again, but Aldarion defied the king 
and begun a 20-year voyage. When Aldarin returned from his 20 years voyage, him and Arendis were betrothed in 858 of the Second Age to the delight of Tarmenaldo, his father. However, they did not marry until 870 of the Second Age after Aldarion had gone on yet another sea voyage. Aldarion and Arendis' marriage proved to be unhappy and only produced one child, their daughter and Kalime. Finally, in the year 882 of the Second Age, Aldarion brought a letter from the High King Gilgalad of Linden from Middle-earth to Tarmanaldo in Numenor. In this letter it claimed that a new shadow had arisen in the east and asked Tarmanaldo for his aid. As a result of this letter, Tarmanaldo learned that his son had aided the elves and these events we will learn about in the next episode and he knew that Aldario knew a lot about what these events meant as he had visited Middle-earth previously. Therefore, recognising that his son was better equipped for the situation and to handle this new potential shadow, Tarmineldor decided to resign the Scepter of Numenor to his son in the year 883 of the Second Age. Tarmineldor relinquished the Scepter quite early, 59 years before his death in 942 of the Second Age. And this is where we are going to end the story for today's episode. I think this is a good time to reflect about the events of the first four episodes of this Numenor Rulers series as well, as this could be seen as a potential bookmark in the history of Numenor. So far, looking at the full reign of the first five rulers that we have looked at in the series, we started with the peace with the rule of Elros and Vardamir. Then later on we started to see the discontent grow slightly and potential fear of a shadow far in the east which especially grew around the same time of the reign of Tar Elendil. Now, during the reign of Tar Menaldo and the story of his son Aldarion, we are seeing this shadow as a great threat, which also fits in quite well with potentially the start of the Amazon Laudering show, as we know from the synopsis, it starts in quote, a relative time of peace, but there is still growing concerns of a rising fear which would be Sauron in the east. So this time period of around 800 to 1000 of the second age fits in quite well and the show might start with some of the events in today's episode and probably most likely the events they will see in the next few episodes of this new Minorian Rulers series. So things are starting to build and shadows starting to rise. Also, to evaluate the reign of Tarmineldor and the adventures of his son Eldarion, firstly starting off with Tarmineldor, within Numenor, just like the other rulers before him, there still is peace and the only real conflict is between him and his son. For Eldarion, his love for the sea and passion to make ships can be a foreshadowing for Numenorians later on, who colonised Middle-earth and cut down trees in places like Enedwaith, etc. Tarmineldo even saw the potential urge for domination over lands by his son as well. I believe this marks the end of the first chapter of Numenor, as things start to build up from here and the full peace in Numenor starts to come to an end. We will find out soon in the next few episodes, especially the next one, where we will follow the story and reign of Aldarion. Exciting stuff. But thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it and please let me know in the comments below if you think that the time period that we have covered in today's video might be the potential star of the Amazon ordering show, especially on the Numenor part. And do you think we will see Aldarion and Arendis and their storyline in the show as well? As the only problem I can see coming into the show is the storylines and time periods and if they will conflict or they will congest them or shorten them. We'll just have to wait and see what Amazon do. But I believe these next few episodes of the Numenor side of the series we're doing will cover lots and lots of things that you probably will see in the Amazon show. But as I said before, 
Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. But until the next video, my friends, goodbye.